Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I'm sure there's something I'm supposed to be doing today that's kind of important, but I think it's more fun to make this kit because this kit looks like a doot, 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 I'm in type of entry system, and the instructions are all in Chinese. I do CD4013, that's all I can see. CD, there's two CD4013s, that's what those are, and there's one CD4011. So U1 and U2 are the same. So that's what we need to do. So we're doing a bit of surface mount, it seems. So I'm just, should we just deal with that right away? Let's get the surface mount stuff out of the way. Because it's always a little bit of extra effort, isn't it, sometimes? And I've got me sold already. So let's see. So U1 and U2 are this chip here. So let's just go for that. I've been playing a game just now. And it's a, a sort of cooking game on the switch where you've got to collaboratively cook food. And I've been playing that with my young children and it's so exasperating, it's unbelievable. So uh, I'm hoping though it will be build team building and all that. If we managed not to kill each other in the meantime. So that is the first two bits to pop down. Be soldered and iron ready. So what I'm going to do, let's see if we can zoom in a tiny bit more, there we go. I'm just going to do the one leg here on each one. So I'm just tinning the pad, just like that. And then I'm going to be a little bit cautious. I'm going to heat that tinned pad whilst moving that to where I think it should be. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to do the same with this one. Okay, so it's kind of where I think it should be. Yeah, that's nice and easy on that one. Let's get the um, last one in there while we're there, and then we'll just solder it down. So you can make this kit pretty quickly looking at it because it's surface mount kit, essentially. I mean, there are a couple of through hole components, but really nothing to uh, write home about on in terms of through hole component volume, the, the sort of thing that you often write home about. going oh that's good nice so three chips ready to go three ICs just gonna feed these in oh I did put a bit of a bridge there on those that wasn't so good probably could benefit from a bit of flux if you're gonna try to do a uh, you know that sort of drag soldering technique but yeah I'm regretting it already that. That's what you want to see though, isn't it? You want to see how to clean up the failures there. So we've got a bridge there. Just get your end of your solder braid, solder wick, whatever you want to call it. And uh, get vicking, get vicking, yes. Ow. Uh, 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 uh. And if that happens sometimes, it could be not just lack of flux, but a dirty, a dead, dirty PCB. I did buy some new flux recently. I should try to locate where that's buried. I don't know if you ever get that where you've uh, you've got something, you know it exists, you know it's somewhere in the immediate vicinity, but exactly where? No, not so much. Not so much. I'm gonna have just having a little recce and kind of like, oh yeah, I have found it. Right, cool. So you can see there's a bit of mess here now. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna have to use a braid to clean it, but I just wanna show you the kind of difference you can get if you've got a, uh, a well-fluxed region. Avoiding, of course, trying to snap the leg off one of your ICs doing it. Gentle. All right, so that's flowed nicely. You can see right away how they flow when you do that. Oh yeah, that is good soldering. So yeah, that, that avoids all of that bloody mess. Get that in there. And then you just drag the uh, tip across and you'll move your blob around and that's it really. There's one bit there I've put a bit too much. Could have done with a bit less solder, but that's fine. Beautiful. 
drag it through. You know you want to go over there. Come on now. Beautifully sold. It's just this one here I could do without. It's got one bridge. No, he doesn't want to be uh, released of his bridgely duties. That's fine. We'll just give a little bit of braid here. Suck it up. We're done. The only downside, of course, is it does leave a lot of flux on here. So if you've got it, just get some some sort of flux cleaning material and just give that a little wipe. Otherwise, you might end up a little sticky, a little sticky in the flux. Right. So that's looking okay. It's got some through hole resistors here. There was one there rather. Um, where else? We've got two in the set plus an electrolytic just off, off the camera there yeah, they are I think I'll just put the switches in because they're they're fun no, no, no. no let's just go with the last of the surface mount otherwise we're going to regret it because the switches will be jiggly joggling all the board up so if you're doing the surface mount stuff next just do this trick of just doing one single pad on one side just put a little blob on each one like so and of course, don't lose your components when you're unwrapping them. So this pad has a floor. If you look at the design of it, the main floor of it is that it's only ever set to one particular number <laughs> and you can't change the number. So for me, I suspect that's going to be a problem, but let's see. It makes it useful, I guess, as a kind of a prop or a child's toy or something where they're just, you're not really trying to hide the number too much. Okay, so we're going to go in with our first resistor. So you will need the tweezers though, to be fair. I don't think you're going to get really too far without tweezers. So. Invest in a decent pair though, don't get the old rubbish pair that comes with a soldering iron kit. Not unless it's a three grand soldering iron kit from Switzerland. There we go, that's nice isn't it? They're going in good. They're going in real good. I'm just sitting a bit proud. And then once they're all down like that, get on that other side. And if you've got it, get your flux in there. Yeah? It'll do a much better job than just neato like this, but electrically, electrically it's fine. It's just not so neat. Note just one more tack switch in the bag. I'll oh, lose the old tack switch. I think we're ready for tack switch because that's the most fun one. We've been saving it. I think we've done our pain. Now it's time for our pleasure. It's a bit, that needs a little bit too much jiggling. Sometimes if you put something in it, it required too much jiggling. You wonder what's going on with it. These are a bit cheap. They're a bit flimsy, so be careful. I have noticed that sometimes you've got to be careful when you're buying Far East parts. I mean, this is a kit, so I haven't got any choice of what parts are in it. But if you're buying a bill of materials, be careful that the quality the quality isn't always the same, and it is for things like this. And it's probably not too much of an issue in operation, but assembly then will take time if it's going to sort of knacker, unless you're getting someone else to make it for you. Like there, see that's just wasting so much time. I've got one that won't go in now, so I've got to leave that, come back to it later. You know, it's just wasting bloody time. That one is legs of bloody bent. Right, let's just work out of a technique here. So they've got a little kink in them. I don't know what the kink's for to sort of let them grip or something in that assembly, but just get the bloody kink out so you can push them straight down there. Done. <laughs> I'm trying to think what that cooking game was called. It's done by Team 17 of, uh, you know, Worms fame. Got that, got that. I'm just going through. 
fixing all of these up ready. Save, save a bit of time. If anything I've learned from Nintendo Switch cookery games is that it's more efficient to prepare a bunch of stuff and then do a bunch of stuff rather than just do prep 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 do and I guess that's why people work on factory lines they tend to just do the same repetitive task because you get really good at it you don't have to move around so much wasting time wasting energy Now, if you ever see these keypads on buildings, more often than not, they're really sort of pants in that if you manage to lever off the keypad, you can just short the contact wires and just get in. A lot of them don't sort of relay the code to some sort of remote system that detects the, the uh, pin is correct or not. And it's sort of lame. It's like pin checking at the uh, failure point. All right, good. And this will be a big failure anyway. Oh, you f <laughs> You can see the frustration here. I'm so tempted just to stop the camera. Just thrash this kit to bits. But no, I'm not going to edit it. You're going to get to see the pain. The pain of it. Every single bloody thing. The pain of making a kit. Right. Let's see if we've got a better technique for doing the old flip, shall we? A bit of foam this time. <laughs> right, that I think will do the trick. I'm just trying to tack. couple of legs on each and then I'm gonna just check them one last push okay so that's they should be all kind of tacked so yeah they're all tacked now I'm just gonna push down there's a few that look like they could have done with a bit more straightening out yeah that bit of foam works I mean the old bit of foam techniques probably all right <laughs> you can see more crank back it does give you opportunity to see the bottom of the PCB, really. So they've got, uh, have they got common? They are wide in a very odd way, actually, aren't they? They're certainly not individually ad addressed. Reminds you of the pocket operators. They've got a lot of uh, tack switches in a fairly small area. Right. We are tactically complete now. Long leg positive, of course, on our electrolytic capacitor. Long leg positive on our LED. That way. No, that way. <laughs> Clip those in. Little check. So close. I can smell your fear. Well, that was from I can smell your fear. Is it from Commando? I don't remember if that guy, Matrix, was in a fear smelling. Someone was felt smelling someone's fear. It sounds like a Blade Runner line. Right, we're going to get these resistors in, and they're both the same value as far as I can tell, so I'm not even going to check where we are going. We don't need roads.
And speaking of uh, not needing roads, Mortal Engines, come on. Why do I have to wait so long to see Mortal Engines? I've just got to work out how to get invited to premieres of movies. Probably by becoming a movie star, but it's a small price to pay for getting to see films early, isn't it? Woohoo! That's hot. One more. That one's a bit wonk, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. We're not doing this as a, as a, bru a beauty contest. Right, good, we're good. Just strip. So this is the power wires now at this point. Got our VCC and our ground. Holiday season soon. Oh, and by the way, just for you snack lovers, I uh, wanted some Pringles today, but I've more or less just helped myself to half a tube of Asda's snacks or stacks or something. Asda have their own Pringles claim, basically. And uh, I get them in the uh, ready salted variety, the plain, um, which is the original flavour in Pringles. And I think Asda's own colouring is green, no, green, <laughs> red to match. Um, and they're really good. I don't, I don't know what the price differential is. I'm not paying attention on that really, since they didn't have any Pringles. Um, and I would say I would get them again. I mean, if, if they're a reasonable price sort of difference between them and the uh, regular Pringles, I definitely would go for them. Right, so we get the ground wire on and we're going to get the VCC wire on, so that's us good to go really. Ready for power, contact. Where's our power? One of my many power confabulations. Alright, get that on there. And I'm just going to get this last probe on here. Good. Boom. Let's put this there to keep that down. We'll have a little zoom in. There we go. Got the power supply set to off. I'm going to wind it down to, I don't know, 3 volts. It's on now, 3 volts. We're not getting much. We're not getting much. 4. Okay, so we're at 5 volts now, but nothing's really happening. But I'm not sure what's supposed to be happening. So let's see. There was a code. Mm. Reading a little book here. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I did read somewhere that there was a code. I'm just looking at the circuit. So let's have a look at this circuit to see what's going on. And just have a quick touch, though. Nothing seems to be pumping out loads of heat right now. So we're probably not shorting. So you've got these components here. These are your switches. One, four. Let's try one, four, seven, and nine. One, four, seven, nine. Yes, look, one, four, seven, nine. One, four, seven, eight. One, four, seven. So one, four, seven, nine. So that's how you know it's worked, okay? So if you look here, and I have no idea what the these 4013s are and stuff, they could be decade counters or something like that. But what I've noticed is they have this CK, which I guess stands for clock, and once this is shorted here, it's enabling the output to the next thing here. So I think to, to, in order for the LED to light up, you need this, this, these Q on each one to be on 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 and to do that you need clock 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 to be on all the clocks and then you can see here that s1 goes into the clock but if it's s2 or s3 it goes into r which is a reset line and not only that when you reset it it resets this one this one this one this one so they're like counters basically they could be like little decade counters or something or hex counters um, 
So that's why if you press 1, 4, 7 or 9 it will activate and anything else will reset the whole lot. So I don't, let's try again, 1, 4, 7, 9, that's good, yeah. 1, 4, 7, 9, anything else should reset it, should it? How do you reset it? 1, 4, 7, 9, oh, 8. 8 is the master reset here then, so basically 8 down here, that's the basic the master reset. I'm just wondering if you push it in a different order if it does anything. I don't think it should because I'm not sure it makes a circuit, but no. So nine seven four one, no. One four nine seven, no. Four one seven nine, no, one four seven nine. So yeah, it's kinda cute, isn't it? Groovy. So that's an interesting kit, isn't it, all in all. I mean it's it kind of proves a point, but it's definitely not something you would want. To base any security on but let's see how could you change this so you could see um, from that circuit that you'd have to wire some in differently and if we look one four seven nine which are all in a row here and nine is this guy so one four one four seven nine you can see they're wired differently so they're, they're basically out of circuit and the other ones are doubled up so what you could do you could cut the tracking through here and then you could basically solder jumper through. So just to show you there, so that's the uh, 1479, 147 and 9. And you could see again how they're wired differently. And then 8, of course, is a reset. So yeah, you could just have jumpers that go from here, and then you literally have four wires, and that you have a one, you know, uh, first uh, digit wire, second digit wire, third digit wire, fourth digit wire, and you can jumper them across. So if you've had a go at that, Please comment down below or in the Discord, show us some pictures of how you've modified one of these these kits. And I'm trying to still desperately trying to find a, a sort of model number. I mean for argument's sake, it's a, a JS56145. So I hope that's of some use to you, and now you can go home and play Mission Impossible when you make it all up. As ever, thank you for watching.